Okay, the next section is about congruent triangles. Congruent triangles are triangles that are identical. Remember, congruent means that they have all the same measures. Uh, so congruent triangles would have the same measure of sides, same measure of angles. So as I look at these two triangles here, I can see from the markings that angle A and angle E are congruent. I can also see angle B and D are congruent. One mark, three marks on these ones, one on those. And then angle BCA right here and DCE right there are also congruent. They have two marks. So all the angles are congruent, but that's not the only thing that needs to be congruent for the whole triangle to be congruent. The sides also must be. So as I look here, AC and EC are congruent, CD and CB are congruent, and ED and AB are also congruent. So all the sides are congruent as well. These triangles are identical. They're congruent triangles. Now how I put that in writing is to use the triangle symbol, which just looks like a triangle, and then name one of the triangles. I'll name this one ABC is congruent to triangle. Now, it's very important that I that my order when I write this triangle is corresponds to the order I wrote this triangle in. Okay? So, angle A uh, was my this is my first first vertex at A and that corresponds with angle E. So, A and E are corresponding down here in my triangle congruency statement. I need to write E in the same place as A. Likewise, when I look up here at B, B is the next one, D is in the same place, same angle on the other triangle, so D. And then when I look at going to C, C on both of these triangles represents the same, same angle. And so there we go. So ABC is congruent to triangle EDC because A, B, and C, all those angles are matching up with these. I got to do it in order. So if I were to rearrange and like twist and flip this triangle to line up E with A and D with B, then C would line up with itself and I'd have the same triangle. Okay, so once again, when they're congruent, everything is congruent. And when I write it, I need to write it with the triangle symbol, the congruency symbol, but also so that the order corresponds. The second part we're going to be going in reverse. They're going to be giving us a statement about congruency and then asking us either to draw a figure that matches that or in this case they just want to know what's congruent to what in here. What angles are congruent to what angles? What sides are congruent to what sides? And so to do this we need to remember that from last time that corresponding parts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We'll get to what that means in a moment, but corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We're going to use this so much this year that we're going to give a uh, sort of an abbreviation uh, acronym, if you will, CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Whenever we ha use this reason and a proof, you're not going to need to write out a huge long statement. You can write CPCTC. That is what it means in geometry. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So let's use that here. Cors let's start with the corresponding angles. Here, every triangle has three angles, and we could represent them by the vertices. So here's one vertex, here's another vertex, there's another vertex in my triangle. So angle F, angle G, angle H, those are, would be three angles in my triangle. Here the other, the three angles in this triangle would be M, N, and P. Those would be the three angles. Okay, so let's start with angle F. Angle F is going to be congruent to one of these angles in the other triangle. But it says it's got to be a corresponding part. So angle F corresponds, it's in the first place here, with angle M, it's in the first place there. So it's congruent to angle M. And so I just go down the list. G is congruent to angle N because they're in the second place. I think you can figure out the third one. Let's go to the sides. FG is a, one of the sides because it goes from one vertex to the other. So it connects them, that's a side. So this segment, FG, is going to be concurrent to this segment M to N because it corresponds to M N. 
Likewise, GH is going to be congruent to NP, corresponding. Fairly simple. All right, now the last side, some of you might have figured out where the last side goes, um, but I want you to go ahead and try to take a guess. So right now we've got FG connects these two, GH connects those two, there's two that aren't connected, and that will be the third side. So watch, I want you to write the last con two concurrency statements that I have not written. The last angle, that should be a piece of cake. And then the last side. Go ahead and give that a shot. 